Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We had started discussing inductor design. So let us continue on that and let us look into the different steps in designing inductors using area product method. So before designing an inductor, you have to know for what application or what power electronic circuit the inductor is going to be used. For example, if you have to design for a buck converter, then uh, you should be knowing that uh, uh, what is the switching frequency of for the buck converter, what is going to be the output power PO for which the inductor is going to be used. Uh, what is going to be the average inductor current IL that will be passing through the inductor and also the current ripple delta IL that has to pass through that inductor. And of course, you have to know what is the uh, uh, inductance value L that has to be designed for. So, this may change uh, depending on different different applications. Now, I am covering here for this example of buck converter. Then uh, uh, further uh, you should choose some reasonable values of current density Jm and the operating flux density Bm. Now we have to have an idea of uh, what is going to be the peak flux density for that particular inductor and uh, what could be the current density of uh, for the conductors that uh, we will be using. Now uh, these uh, are something you will be knowing by practice uh, looking at previous designs you may be able to get these values. But most of uh, these designs are standard designs so for many of them um, at various places in textbooks and in different different uh, uh, places in different application notes and design sheets you will be able to get these values. So, you have to have an assumption of the current density and your flux density that uh, for which you will be doing the design. Then uh, further you should choose the core material. Now this again we have discussed before. Core material again is something basically you decide mainly on your switching frequency and your uh, saturation flux density and the power rating for which you are going to be designing. Uh, further your uh, window utilization factor is uh, again another important term which has to be assumed its value. Now, usually this KU is taken as point between 0.4 to 0.5 sometimes you can take 0.4 sometimes we will also take 0.5 but these are the usual values which are chosen uh, for your design of inductors. And temperature rise delta T now depending on again your application where you are going to use the inductor what is the ambient temperature, how much is the maximum temperature rise that is allowed, you have to have a specification for the temperature rise delta T, how much delta T is allowed for that particular design. So, to begin the design, the first step is that you will be calculating the peak current. Now, uh, this uh, is for you to recall, we have discussed this before when we analyze these Buckan water. So, if this is the gate pulse, then this is how in your continuous conduction mode the inductor current rises and then it falls. And uh, the average of uh, this current is this capital I L. And further this part, this much is your delta I L. and half of it is a, your delta I L by 2 and this part this is your peak value we will call it as I L peak this point. So, first you need to calculate your peak current. So, peak current will be given by I L peak in this case it will be given as equal to I L plus delta I L by 2. Then we calculate the energy which is your W m which will be given as equal to half of I L half of L I L peak square. So, this is the maximum energy that is going to be stored in that inductor. 
further we calculate the area product AP. So, AP we have seen the expression it will be 2 W M by K U B M into J M. Now, if you wish you can call it as uh, B P K also earlier I had written it as B P K the peak flux density or uh, your operating flux density whatever is the flux density that you have assumed initially for your design that is what you will be substituting here and J M is again the current density which you have assumed or you have sp uh, the specification is given for the design is what we will be substituting here and K U again uh, assumed as 0.4 or 0.5 that is what you will be substituting and so that is how you will be getting the area product AP for your design. Further based on that area product AP you uh, go to the data sheets of different manufacturers of uh, course and uh, you just check these area product values and you just find out uh, a core which is uh, having an area product close to that uh, value of AP that you have calculated and slightly higher than that. Uh, mostly uh, the higher AP uh, core is chosen than what you have calculated. So, that is the next step that is your core selection. So, once you select the core based on your this uh, AP your area product uh, you will be obtaining different values like you will be obtaining the mean length turn for that core, uh, the your magnetic path length and uh, your uh, window area WA the cross sectional area of the core AC and uh, then the surface area AT and the several other uh, values will be provided by the data sheet. So, you should also note down this part number of the core that you are selected is usually a core number you can say that. So, this we have discussed before I had shown you this. Uh, so, uh, based on your area product AP uh, you choose the core and based on it you will be getting different values associated with your core selection. Further uh, you will be also noting down the core dimensions say uh, uh, I had shown this before this is just for you to recall uh, what we have discussed in previous lecture. So, uh, your core dimensions different dimensions also will be obtained by you. So, that means once you have selected the core a particular core number or what you call it is the part number uh, you will can note down various uh, uh, values of various terms your magnetic path length, core weight, mean length turn, cross sectional area of the core, window area, area product, core geometry coefficient. Now, this is another term which is uh, used uh, actually another method of uh, inductor design, but we are not discussing here right now. So, surface area AT, permeability of that material and uh, then milli Henry's per 1000 turns and uh, of course, the core dimensions. So, uh, based on the core selection you get lot of values which you can further use uh, for your uh, design purpose. The next step is the wire selection. Once you have selected the core, now next thing is you select the wire and you have to wind it. That is how basically that is your magnetic design is actually just that. So, for that uh, you should be calculating the RMS current. Now, RMS current I L R M S this is for here in this buck converter this can this is written as I L square plus delta I L square by I L. Your IL RMS for the nature of the current that we have uh, chosen here or we are discussing this nature of the current IL for that your IL RMS is given by this. Now, you must be knowing how to calculate RMS current. So, based on your uh, shape of the waveform of your inductor current 
uh, you can use the proper method of uh, calculating your RMS current. But here I have just written the expression for this type of current. So, uh, do not take use it for uh, everywhere blindly note that this is for this nature of the current. If it is not so your nature of the current is different you have to calculate you have to find out your RMS value of inductor current. Further you can calculate the cross sectional area AW this will be given by your IL RMS by J. M. So, J m is the current density and uh, I L R m is, is your, um, your R m is value of current. So, divided by J m gives you the cross sectional area of your wire. So, once you have calculated the cross sectional area of the conductor that you need, again you go to the wire tables and uh, then you compare uh, different cross sectional areas of conductors like this, uh, this kind of tables I had shown you before. So, uh, you can see here this cross sectional area are given. So, you then you find out which is the, uh, what is the gauge of the wire which is going to be suitable based on your AW calculation. So, this is different gauge wires AWG uh, number you can find out from there. So, once you chose uh, this you will be also be knowing the resistance per kilometer ok per unit distance is uh, per unit distance resistance you will be obtaining resistance per unit distance you will be obtaining. So, that is another value that you will be knowing once you choose the wire. So, using that then you can calculate your number of turns number of turns will be K u w a by or A w. Now, this A w is going to be for the wire that you have chosen. Do not uh, substitute the A w the, for the one that you have calculated because once you have chosen a particular wire. So, then that uh, cross sectional area may be little higher than uh, what is your calculated A w. So, this is what uh, you should be careful for and W a uh, the value uh, you will be obtaining from the data sheet of the core that you have selected. And KU is a value you have chosen. So, you can take it like 0.4 or 0.5. So, this will be giving you the number of turns n that are possible to fit in that window of the code that you have selected. Next, you will have to decide the air gap length which you may be requiring for your inductor. Uh, this also I had. Uh, shown you before like this that you may be having some air gap in your inductor design. So, this is that uh, air gap Lg length which is what you have to find out for your inductor design. So, for that recall that your inductance L this is written as n square the number of turns square by the total reluctance. The total reluctance is the air gap reluctance plus the core reluctance. So, from there what we can write is that your reluctance of air gap is equal to n square by L minus the reluctance of the core. This further you know that can be written as the reluctance is given as Lg mu 0 by this cross sectional area AC we are ignoring the fringing effect and then this will be written as n square by L minus Lc by mu 0 mu Rc into AC. From here 
what you obtain is that this air gap length Lg is going to be equal to mu 0 AC n square by L minus LC mu RC. This is the equation that you can use for your calculation of air gap. Now, here mu 0 is the permeability of uh, free space so that value is known AC value the cross sectional area of the core you have chosen the core. So, you will be getting it from the data sheet of the manufacturer n value number of turns we have already calculated L is something you are designing for so you know the value of L. LC is the magnetic path length. So, that also once you have chosen the core you know the magnetic path length and mu RC is the permeability of the core that you have selected and that also is a value that you will be obtaining in the data sheet of the core. So, using all these values then you can find out the air gap length that is required for your inductor. Now, up till here the design of the inductor you can say is completed. You have chosen the wire, you have chosen the core, where you have also uh, found out how much is the air gap length that is required. Uh, so, uh, the number of turns are also calculated. Uh, so, this is uh, your inductor design or whatever you need is basically completed. Now, the next part is just uh, you may uh, do some calculations and you may verify that your temperature rise um, and your core losses all those are within limits of what you uh, initially those specifications you had started with. So, for that uh, first uh, let us find out your magnetic flux density uh, uh, that is going to be there for your particular values of inductor currents that will be flowing. Now, uh, this is your uh, uh, the BH curve hysteresis curve. Now, we are discussing here for buck and water. So, buck and water you know the nature of the current. So, the nature of the current is, is like this. So, it is a DC current which has got a ripple in it. So, then in that case your uh, this BH curve uh, it, it will be traced only this part will be traced. It is not going to be tracing the, the negative part and it will have some average value. So, that average value is going to be your BDC. So, this is BH curve we can also draw a, uh, a flux density versus time curve and that will be something similar to your uh, inductor current waveform. So, here first it increases and it reaches to the peak value that is your uh, B peak and then it comes down and uh, it reduces to the lower value and the average of this as I said is your BDC. And uh, in between these this part your this part is your BM the AC part of it or you can say that it is that part which is associated with your delta I L. So, you know that your MMF is equal to ampere turns N into I and uh, that could be written as HC LC plus your H G into L G where H C is the magnetic field intensity in the core and L C is the magnetic path length, H G is the magnetic field intensity in the air gap and L G is your air gap length. So, if you want to express it in terms of uh, B, so we can write it as B C mu R C mu 0 L C plus B G mu 0 L G. Now, if we neglect the fringing effect this B C and B G are same. So, B C by mu 0 into L C mu R C plus L G this is whatever M M F is going to be equal to. So, from here we can write your B C as equal to mu 0 N I L G plus 
L C by mu R C. So, this is a general expression for magnetic flux density. So, then your A C part the peak value of A C component of flux density that will be written as B m is equal to mu 0 n. Now, I will be replaced by delta I L by 2 by L g plus L c mu R c. This is the A c component and the peak value of the flux density B peak will be given as mu 0 n i 0 plus delta i l by 2 which is your basically the i peak this divided by l g plus l c by mu r c and this flux has a dc component b d c which is the difference of b p k and your b m. So, then you can use uh, these expressions to calculate your peak value of flux density and your uh, peak value of the AC component. Now, this peak value of AC component is uh, what is responsible for your code loss because this is the part which is going to be traced again and again as a loop and uh, this tracing of this loop is going to lead to the code losses. So, uh, this we will be using for computation of the code loss and this uh, BPK is also important because then uh, how much uh, whether it is going towards saturation or not it should be less than BS the saturation flux density of the core material you have chosen. So, next you need to calculate the losses. So, first you can calculate the core loss. So, code loss uh, we have seen first you can compute the code loss density. So, the code loss density is k f power m b m power n b m power n is uh, b m is the a c part of the flux density. So, you will be substituting here the a c part of the flux density and uh, this uh, we have seen this is what per meter cube. Okay. So, then you have to multiply it with the volume to get the total code loss which will be P V into V C the volume of the core and what is V C? V C is equal to be your A C into magnetic path length L C will be giving the volume of the core. Next you can calculate the copper loss. So, to calculate the copper loss uh, first you have to calculate the resistance of uh, the conductor. So, that will be your mean length turn m l t multiplied by the number of turns n multiplied by your uh, resistance per unit distance. So, r w d c by your per unit distance L w. Now, if it is given as per kilometer in the data sheet of the conductor, then uh, it will this L w will be your uh, 1000 meters. And uh, uh, you may be using this R w d c value the d c resistance. We have discussed before that A c resistance is higher than the d c resistance. Uh, for simplicity, we are uh, not uh, calculating here the AC resistance, but if you want a more accurate calculation you can look for the AC resistance for the switching frequency you will be using. So, um, uh, why are we talking about this mean length turn? So, if you if this is your core
and you are going to wind it. So, this uh, mean length turn whatever is the mean length here multiplied by the number of turns n will be providing you the total length of the winding or total length of the conductor. So, that total length multiplied by the resistance per unit distance is what you will be giving you the total resistance of your conductor. So, once you have obtained that uh, you just calculate the, the copper loss P w as equal to I L R m s square into your resistance R L. And finally, the total power loss P c w will be the sum of the two P c plus P w. Next you calculate the temperature rise for that you first calculate the surface power loss density which is given by your P c w by A t. A t is the total surface area and that we have seen that will you will be obtaining from the data sheet of the core. P c w is what you can uh, you can compute and so the temperature rise delta t will then be calculated as 4 T i power of 0.826 and this is obtained in degree Celsius. So, from there once you compute the temperature rise uh, you will know whether the temperature rises within limits or not. So, to summarize the steps of the inductor design you have some initially some uh, specifications um, and you have to assume the current density and also the flux density uh, for the uh, for your design and uh, you will be also assuming the window utilization factor. Other specification you will be obtaining from uh, for the power electronic circuit uh, for which you will be I mean the application for which you will be designed. Then further uh, the first step uh, uh, will be that you will be using the area product method you will be calculating your area product A p and uh, you will be selecting the core based on it. Once you have selected the core then you will be selecting the wire its gauge further you will be also deciding the number of turns n and uh, then you can compute the air gap length if any which is required for your inductor. And apart from that uh, you can do some verification calculations also like computing the flux densities and then the core losses and the temperature rise to verify if uh, whatever you have designed whether it is going to meet the specifications or not. Thank you.